Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is another episode of A View from the Other Side. Of course, it's the big Chelsea versus Spurs game at Stamford Bridge on Monday. So I've got Rory from the Chelsea Fans Channel. How are you, Rory? Yeah, terrified to be. Uh, I feel like I'm on enemy soil. You uh, are on enemy <laughs> soil, and especially with all... I've been looking a bit at your social media and your YouTube channel. You've been basically just ripping the piss out of Spurs for the last few days, which is brave, <laughs> is it not, Rory? Brave? Yeah, it's certainly brave to come on and have this conversation. But, um, yeah, I, I, we haven't got much else going on at the moment, so we have to have this. Like, give us something. That's right. You did do... I saw a video you did where it was uh, 10 reasons still to be cheerful. I think you only came up with four. Very true, yeah. Very true. So, uh, anyway, as you'll know, if you've watched a view from the other side before, we just asked Rory some questions about the match coming up and the season so far. So let's start with the season so far. You seem a bit negative about it. Um, yeah. Try and give, you know, how do the Chelsea fans feel about it overall? Incredibly flat. This has been a disastrous season. The campaign from beginning to end has been shoddy and that's sort of the nicest word I can use. Yeah. Um, I think from the, from the get-go, I think even actually prior to the first game of the season, we knew that things weren't right. The pre-season was poor. We had a terrible uh, charity shield. The, uh, we went over to America. It wasn't right. And we've never recovered. Yeah, so from the way it looked from from the outside for me, it looked like the breaking point was with uh, the Eva Carnero incident, the physio. Is that fair or you think it had gone before? Am I right in thinking that you felt that a lot of players came back overweight and complacent? Yeah, that certainly was an issue. I think our transfer policy over the summer was also abysmal. Okay. Like, you know, when, when Manchester City were out buying Otamendi, we were buying Papi Gillenbodji and, and Michael Hector from Reading. It really wasn't oh, yeah. a good... That is weird. It really wasn't a good transfer window that we've had. You know, we haven't had a good transfer window for about three or four windows now. Mm. So it's not good enough. You know, we signed Falcao. Just mm. just not good enough. And, yeah, the, you know, the, the zenith of it all was Eva Carnera. Mm. That was a disastrous, a disastrous moment on the first day of the season. And it really did set the tone. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting you talk about the transfer windows, I think, because a lot of Spurs fans were saying at the end of the transfer window, oh, you know, we haven't, you know, I think we only bought Kieran Trippier, a couple of players, and more kind of to boost the squad rather than uh, the only player who really came in and uh, boosted the side. Uh, well, Toby Alderweireld, Deli Alli, we'd already bought and loaned back, but they're the two who've really boosted the mm. side. Is it a bigger question about financial fair play, meaning you can't just go out and buy those big players anymore? Or? Yeah, I, th I think Chelsea got caught up in an issue of financial fair play. When we were buying players and, and buying them for profit, you know, mm -hmm. players like Mo Salah, Juan Cadrado, we were buying them, I think, with the thought in mind of getting rid. Right. They, you know, we were interested in Mo Salah for a while, and he certainly looked good at, since... Yeah. Leaving Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, Juan Cuadrado is looking fantastic in Italy and will potentially come back with Conte. Conte is a big fan of his, apparently. Right. But I think that the, they were bought in. The days of us spending £50 million on a player yeah. were over. It was all, you know, £15, £20 million with the aim, I think, of rese reselling them right. at some point. And obviously, we lost out on all the viral to you, mm. and he would have been the exact antidote to this season. He would have been exactly what we needed. Do you know what I think is interesting is I, I imagine Toby Alderweireld didn't go to you because he thought he might not get in the team all that much, but actually he's been the best centre-back in the league oh, this season. First, and first, name, on the team sheet. first yeah. name on the team sheet at Chelsea, without a doubt. He's been incredible and we've really, really missed him. Yeah, uh, despite never having him. That yeah, is that's, a, yeah, that's that is an emotional him, yeah. way of, yeah. of looking at it. Uh, since, uh, obviously, Mourinho went and then Hiddink has come in, uh, the form on paper has improved but you have still been unhappy with it overall is that right yeah it's it's massively papering over the cracks it's you know hitting hitting is the master of a draw it's so uninspiring when you go to the bridge you know i think there's been a bit of a myth created around chelsea that we've often played negative football parking the bus and stuff mm -hmm. it wasn't the case under Mourinho. you know when we had sort of robin and duff and drogba and lampard and essien and balak it was brilliant it was mm. exciting it was riveting stuff turning up there under hitting and you know you're playing stoke at home and you've got Mikel and Matic. It's just the most uninspiring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John Obi Mikel seems to have had like a, a career rebirth. Yes, under, he has. He had a renaissance. Yeah. But um, I rate Mikel. He's a great player in the right fixture. At home to Stoke alongside Matic is just so uninspiring. And he, like I say, he's the master of the draw. We've drawn, we've drawn so many games under him. Yeah, which uh, I, I, put, I mean, we'll come to this, but I think the game on Monday has got a draw written all over it, but we'll see. Oh, I would um, be delighted. Something I always <laughs> ask uh, in a view from the other side, you know, what have you guys, uh, you, but also do you think Chelsea fans in general, apart from the hatred of Spurs, what have they made of Spurs this season as a team? What uh, you say? I mean, as soon as I, if I take the rivalry aside, and the rivalry is a compliment, you know, the mm. fact that, I'm so preoccupied with Spurs' season, and Chelsea fans are so preoccupied with Spurs' season. It is a huge testament to the brilliant work that um, Pochettino's done. Taking the rivalry aside, you've been magnificent. Mm. You are the best team in the league. Mm. Um, 
you're, I think that you're really going to struggle to win it, but you are the best team in the league. I think Harry Kane is undoubtedly the best English striker. Mm. Um, I, I rate, I have a real soft spot for Sergio Aguero, but sure, me too. After Good Aguero, plan. after you know, we can have the debate over Aguero or Kane, but if we take Aguero out, it's Kane. Yeah, you know, um, I think that Deli Ali has been a revelation, and it's so nice to see what can happen when you give give the youth lads a chance. They Chelsea have won another youth cup, yeah, and none of those lads ever get looking, and and you know, you've you've. Uh, bled so many through and it's really really nice to see it's is that, great for England as well yeah it is yeah it is good and, and Rory and I went to um, Germany yeah. England in Berlin go up <laughs> and check that out on the Football Republic actually an amazing time um, it is interesting uh, you talk about those youth players not getting a chance with Conte coming in Presumably it's hard because he knows if it doesn't start well, uh, then no one will give him any points for blooding youth players. So it Absolutely. may be deemed, is that, that kind of managerial merry-go-round of manager after manager means that nobody seemingly yeah. is willing to put a faith in the youth. Really. You're absolutely right. I think when managers come into Chelsea, they come in with a remit of immediate success. Mm. Like nobody, which is why I think we've missed a trick here with Hiddink, because Hiddink... The season was over before it begun for Hiddink, so he did have an opportunity to, to try some things out and never really took it. You know, there's been a few whispers here and there. But Loftus it, Cheek has played a few Loftus times. Loftus Cheek's he? played a few times, and you know, we've seen Trey or Ray score a couple of goals, and we've seen Kennedy on the wing, but it's nothing, it's insignificant. Compared right. to how good the youth setup is, hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's completely insignificant. And it's a shame because I think there was an opportunity here. But yeah, I think looking forward, of course. Co um, Conte coming in is going to prioritise proven winners over Charlie Colkett. Yeah. Of course he is. And so you need, would you say you're looking at needing, you know, a couple new centre backs? Because Terry at this point is still leaving, although I think, do you think he might end up staying? But um, then Cahill is also, you know, no, he hasn't Cahill, had a great season. No, we, we need, we need almost a complete rebrand it's right. th this team is, is really on its last legs it's, ha it's had it I w obviously will be devastated to see John Terry leave don't hate me um, but I think that he is far and away the best defender at the club uh, Gary Cahill isn't good enough but that could be said for an awful lot of players we, yeah. are, we are really in dire straits is it possible then looking uh, from the outside of Spurs because I'm obviously looking with a Spurs head is it possible that next season then with you know you having a new manager more than likely United new manager Man City new manager Fenger, I'm sure, will stay, but you know, with the fickleness of Arsenal fans, is it possible that Spurs may benefit again from not being in transition, and if they were to get a good start, could really, you yeah. know, challenge again? You think? Absolutely, Barnaby. I'm, I'm very, very worried about the challenge that Tottenham have uh, in the, you know, the future that Tottenham have. I think that in, in the squad, you have an incredibly young squad. Yeah. I'm right there. The right? youngest, yeah. The youngest squad. Uh, you've, like I say, you are the best team in the league. Mm. You've been. The future is incredibly bright. I think the only thing that could happen to Tottenham and I don't mean this in a, in a wistful thinking sort of way, but you do. I think Pochettino has made some noises about perhaps PSG. Mm -hmm. Harry Kane is going to be one of the most sought after strikers in the world. Mm -hmm. um, if you can keep this group of players together, and I don't see why you can't, but if you can, mm. the future is very bright. If not, you know, then you're rebuilding again and it's a whole yeah. new process. I think, I think with the Pochettino thing, I mean, the press are certainly making a lot of it, but he also said before he said it's always been a slight dream of mine to, marry, uh, to manage PSG, he also said the French League doesn't interest me at the moment because there's only one team in it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think it's a bit of press talk, but, you know, it does, it looks to me anyway, like I think this is a, a thing for Pochettino where he almost has the only opportunity in the Premier League to build a legacy if he stays yes. there five, six, seven years. Yes. Because then the stadium comes in and he's got those players from the start. Whereas like we talked about, you know, those other managers of the other clubs, it has to be success straight away. You lose three games on the bounce and you're probably out. Yes. Oh, um, I, I agree. I mean, I don't, think, I don't think there's anything in it for Pochettino to leave Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. There's no reason for him, no good reason for him to leave. It's, the, yeah. the future's looking very bright for him. Uh, okay, so... Um, a little bit of uh, what's, is there any early, uh, we're filming this on Thursday, is there any early kind of team news slash any team report you can give us? What, who will play, who won't? Hazard obviously came in, didn't he, for the Bournemouth game? Yes, looked uh, very good. Almost like he was just warming himself up yes, for the big one. Yes, absolutely. Uh, he got the message as well. We made, a, we made him fully aware, he was playing on our wing down at Bournemouth, and we made him fully aware of how pivotal we see this game against Tottenham. And uh, I think he made some comments to that effect as well. Yeah. Um, the big news in our camp, uh, that people are really keeping uh, their fingers crossed for is John Terry returning. Right. I think that our defence is such a shambles at the moment. Gary Cahill 
is not up to it. I, I dread to think what would happen if Ivanovic had, you know, somebody like Deli. Well, no, he'll be banned. But you know, yeah. players, players of his caliber running at him, it could really be a disaster. So um, John Terry being back, we really are desperate for that. And if that happens. I think that we have a far bigger chance than if it doesn't. OK, and here's an interesting uh, hypothetical here. If Leicester win it against United on Sunday, does that change the motivation of Chelsea in a way? I mean, obviously Chelsea no. fans will still want, you know, want it as much to beat Spurs, but it, it feels like the idea, to me anyway, this is what it looks like to me, is if you have a chance to finish it for us, like dead finish it, so us not beating you means that we can't win the league, then the motivation levels might be way higher than if it's kind of just another London derby, which is you know, which is big enough as it is. Obviously. That would be that would be another layer. Of course, mm. killing your title bid would be a wonderful thing for Chelsea Football mm. Club, but I think that the record that we have against you at Stamford Bridge, but yeah. like there are an entire generation of Chelsea fans who have never been, you know, they've never seen Tottenham win at Stamford Bridge in their yeah. lifetime. I was nine. You're 1990, not, I was right. nine. I'm giving away my, yeah. my age here. But, but yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, that record is something that Chelsea fans hold very, very dear and wouldn't want to sacrifice for anything. Yeah. So ir irrespective of what happens at Old Trafford, Chelsea fans are desperate to win this game. But then, of course, from a Spurs point of view, realistically, never been a better time to break that hoodoo. Completely. The way we've been playing and the way you've been playing. Completely. You could certainly have the minerals to do it. You're a better team. We are going to have to have the game of our season to get a draw. Yeah. And... Um, I have to say, from our point of view, I've been looking at it. Obviously, as a realist Spurs fan, I'm, fan, I'm still woke. We're five points ahead of Woolwich. Uh, they've got <laughs> Norwich at home. We've got Chelsea away. In my opinion, I think if we get a draw, obviously we need a win at this point to still win tight, but I think a draw would mean that we'll definitely finish above Arsenal because they've got City away after that and then blah, blah, blah. And we've got a better goal difference. So no St. Totteringham's Day? That's well, we're, I, think, I think we're hopeful at this point that that won't happen, but I don't want to jinx it by Good any luck. means. Um, OK, just penultimate question. You mentioned a few of the players at Spurs you like. You know, if you had the opportunity to bring some of those Spurs players into the Chelsea eleven at this point, how <laughs> many of them do you think would get in and who, who would be top of your list? Oh, Barnaby, if we, did a, if we did a combined eleven, I'd be surprised if Chelsea got two players in there. Really? Yeah, I'd genuinely be surprised. You'd have Courtois ahead of Lloris, I assume you would? I... I don't think I would. No, I don't think I would. I think I would. Ha I would have John Terry in any in any team. Leader. I would have to fight for John Terry. So Terry um, and Alderweireld maybe. Terry and Alderweireld. I, I mean, I think Fabregas is on is on very good form at the moment and looking good. And so how long is that? How long has he been on good form for? Because the rest of the season he's been poor, hasn't he? Uh, I'd say turn of the year. Oh, okay. Turn of the year. He was man of the match. We went to Arsenal and got a win against all odds. Yeah. And Fabregas was probably the re you know Costa led the line and played. Brilliantly got the goal, but yeah. Fabregas was the reason. He was a heartbeat. All right. Um, but Fabregas, on his day, certainly would be. I would fight for him to be in a in a combined eleven with you. Aside from that, yeah, under and in, under normal circumstances, other clubs, I would always say Diego Costa. But you're mm. so privileged in this setting that you've got Harry Kane. Yeah. How can I possibly make a case for Costa? And what a wonderful thing that is to hear. <laughs> okay, and finally, so uh, we're going to go for some predictions. If we can have a score, and why not tell me some scorers as well, and I'll give you mine. I'm going to have to go optimistic and I'm going to go that Chelsea will win the game 2-1 mm -hmm. and I'm going to live the dream and Cesc Fabregas and John Terry are going to score the two he, goals. Terry does always score against us and some of them don't even officially count. But they, still, <laughs> they still go in. Uh, I'm going to go one all, I'm afraid. I think there is, I think this, it feels very much like Chelsea's cup final, you know, the cliche, but it, is, it, it is. feels very much like the most important game in their season. So the fans will be up for it and it's a night game. So that kind of ramps it up a bit. Um, I think Harry Kane will score for us and Diego Costa for you because he's a he'll be on it I think I think he'll be on it um, anyway guys let us know what you think uh, the score will be in the comment section below let us know what you thought of Rory's uh, thoughts <laughs> Rory thank you very much for Cheers. coming thank on we didn't us. fight we didn't scrap it was very <laughs> amiable uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV and if for some reason you found yourself on the wrong channel and you are a blue you're a Chelsea fan go over to the Chelsea fans channel on YouTube, they're also on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, they're very, you know, very Chelsea. That's <laughs> what I can say. Anyway, guys, most importantly, get behind the boys. Come on, you Spurs. Cheers. Hi, guys, Barnaby for Spurred on. Before the massive Chelsea versus Spurs game coming up, we thought we'd see whether we can take them on Spurred on style. So this is our five-a-side match against the Chelsea fans channel.